Hello, everyone. My name is Jordan Smith, <clears throat> and I am the voice and the astrologer behind the webpage and the YouTube channel called Nonconformist Conscience. This week for the forecast video, I am going to go over Venus moving into the sign of Pisces, which will happen tomorrow during the evening hours here in Oklahoma, so central time. And then on Sunday, the 29th, Mercury will trine Uranus. Before I go into what those mean, let's talk a little bit about what was going on during the new moon and a week before that. So the new moon was on January 21st. And um, Venus was conjunct Saturn in the sign of Aquarius while this new moon in Aquarius was going down. And this new moon was squaring the nodal axis of the moon while in an out of sign conjunction to Pluto in the sign of Capricorn. <clears throat> when we have a square to the nodes like we did with Venus the week prior, and also with the moon, um, during this new moon in Aquarius, it sets up a situation where we could create a dynamic of what Jeff Wolf Green calls skip steps, meaning that we're not able to actualize the dynamic of what the planet or planets squaring the nodal axis means in relation to the archetypes of those. Uh, signs that the nodes are in. And so Venus was in the sign of Aquarius, squaring the south node of Scorpio and the north node in Taurus a week prior to this new moon, where the new moon was squaring this same nodal axis, going over the same degrees that Venus had just been in the week prior, a little over a week prior. So the best way to cope or to resolve what this is, is to look at the node that the planet was last in conjunction with. And in the case of the new moon, and in the same case with Venus, it's the south node of Scorpio. So we were all being called a week prior to this new moon and during this new moon to create an objective awareness around our values and our needs and where we have had conditioning from our family, society, and religion that correlates to what is our natural needs or values. And going back and doing the scorpionic work of <clears throat> creating an awareness about our emotional and psychological dynamics that stem from these conditioned values and needs. So through the objectivity of looking at this, we could create a situation where liberation could occur to liberate from these old values, these crystallized structures within that are formed revolving around the conditions or the conditioning of our value system and how we meet our own needs. And so this has to deal with our relational dynamics, how we inwardly and outwardly have been relating to ourselves and to others. So for a lot of people, this was going back and looking at how what I've been told is my, you know, where I get my needs met or what I value. There's a, a need to look at the psychological and emotional nature of this. How we've gone about getting our needs met. Has it been through manipulation? Is that something that's been conditioned for us? You know, I can give a few examples of um, you know, we're looking at codependency, which runs rampant within our society, that if you are doing everything with your partner and they're, you know, doing X, Y, and Z, and you're posting it on social media, then your relationship is great. That is a conditioned value. That doesn't mean that your needs are actually getting met. Or if you are getting your needs met, is it externally? Are you not able to do that for yourself? These are all dynamics that we were called to look at 
you know, some of the other ones that I've run across with clients is I like to call it checking the boxes. Like we're taught, especially as women or AFAB to <clears throat> grow up and go to college, check. That's a check of a box. Then you meet a partner, check. You get married, check. You buy a house, check. You have a baby and a family, check. And through that, we are conditioned to think that once that happens, that life will be happy, that it, it will be great. And a lot of people are experiencing the phenomenon of understanding that they don't feel great, even though they, they've been sold this dream of what this is. And so during the Aquarius new moon and a week prior, we were all being called to objectively observe, observe what's been going on in our relationships. Have we created dependencies? Are we depending on other people? Are we able to meet our own needs? And through this objective awareness, we're able to liberate from those values and clear space to create new needs and new values that are rooted in self-reliance. It pulls in that North Node. And this North Node has been, you know, in a conjunction with Uranus. And during this period of time, Uranus and Venus have been in mutual reception of each other. So the clearing out through objective analysis creates an awareness to where we can radically alter and shift and change our own inner relationship with self to become self-sufficient and self-reliant. That's been the underlying theme for most of this year as well. But the new moon we just had and the week prior really punched up that energy and it was a call to act to go back and to look at this inner content of our relational dynamics and to be honest with oneself. There was a sextile going on with Jupiter um, at the time of the new moon. And so it's really good to keep all of this in mind as Venus is going to go into the sign of Pisces. Venus in the sign of Pisces is indicative of a culmination of a series of relational dynamics that we've been dealing with for a long time. The last time Venus was in Pisces was in the beginning of May, May 6th of 2022, and was there until May, uh, oh, it was April 6th, and then stayed there until May 5th of 2022. And so we can look at this time frame and really think and reflect back on this past year of all of the dynamics that we've been dealing with and how we've been inwardly and outwardly relating and see that now there is a culmination of some of these dynamics. Venus and Pisces can indicate a time where external events get triggered that enforce the experience of crisis or disillusionment. And what this does is it serves as a necessary process to readjust oneself and realign through this readjustment to get back in touch with what our core needs and values are on a very natural soul level. What is authentic and natural for you has nothing to do with how we've been conditioned. So there's this initiation through this culmination of a dissolving process. And what is this? This is the dissolving of temporal values for some the values that we've been conditioned to conform to. And this is where we can feel victimized or powerless of a situation by the external events that get triggered for us um, or for some during this time as a way to have this realignment that is necessary and gets us to the bottom of understanding what our own intrinsic needs and values are, and then how to be able to meet one's own needs and become self-reliant. Venus in the sign of Pisces is still the ruler of Uranus and Taurus. And so there is a radical shift in the way that we are relating inwardly to ourselves right now if you are a person who is doing the work. At the very least, you're going to see this projected out 
into the collective and you will see people who are going through these types of things. So during this Venus and Pisces transit, as this is occurring tomorrow, um, in the evening hours here in Oklahoma, Venus will also be semi-square to Chiron and semi-square to Mercury and applying into a square with Mars, which is Chiron's ruler. Mars is in the sign of Gemini still, and it's ruled by that Mercury. So we can see that this is a, a, a snapshot of what's going down or what we're working with. So with Venus in the sign of Pisces semi-square semi to Chiron, there can be this underlying friction that happens with the semi-squares, um, and it's going to be felt with Mercury as well. And the underlying friction is necessary because it can get us to act. Now, some will try to resist these dynamics, but for those who are consciously working with this, the call is to look at where we have felt wounded, Chiron, and to look at where we felt like we couldn't initiate something because we felt powerless or that we didn't have a choice in the matter. This is the semi-squared Mercury and to Chiron. And to look at where we might have been, you know, experiencing illusion that we didn't have a choice when really we did. So there can be this situation where we are revisiting um, these dynamics of feeling powerless or that we didn't have a choice or that we couldn't make the choice that we wanted to. And there's a call to have discernment about this with Venus being in Pisces, about how you were inwardly relating at the time that these circumstances were happening. And to go back and to look at how you can do something different to commit to oneself, Mercury and Capricorn, to enter a new path that is in alignment with whom you naturally are. This is a call to really look at where we might have given ultimate meaning to something outside of ourselves externally. And it created a situation where we felt powerless or victimized. And to ask oneself, why didn't my soul, my soul call that in? What was it that I was needing to work on at this time? And through this awareness, one can make different choices as to how to go about doing this. And there's an, a need to commit to this, to really commit to understanding and learning what all of our temporal values are and where the conditioning took place you know, whether it be prior lifetimes or within this lifetime. And ultimately to understand that the illusion is, is that we don't have a choice or that we didn't and that we're not here to suffer or to feel powerless. We're here to make choices and to experience life and to experience life and the truth of what that is. These are all these kind of Pisces dynamics. So it's as Venus is applying into this square with Mars, there's going to come a time where there's a choice to be made. And so it's important to use your own discernment whenever this time comes as a way to make a correct judgment. Capricorn, Mercury. So on the 29th, Mercury in the sign of Capricorn, who is ruled by Saturn and Aquarius, is going to be in a disseminating trine with Uranus and the sign of Taurus, ruled by this Venus and Pisces. Venus and Pisces at the time of this conversation going down between Mercury and Uranus is also going to be trining the south node in Scorpio. Venus is ruled by Neptune, and that Scorpio south node is ruled by Pluto and Capricorn. And what this negates is a time where we are asked to reflect Capricorn. 
Mercury and Capricorn to reflect. And through that reflection and awareness, an objective awareness, Uranus, can come in and we can have the liberation that needs to occur. So this is a time to be reflecting and to be objective, objectively identifying our, about things about our situations and looking at our inner psychology of how our values that have been conditioned have played a major role in how we do relationship. And through this asking and answering one's own questions, Capricorn, and the reflection that's being asked of us, through this trying, information can be disseminated to us about what it is that we're needing to do for ourselves in order to radically change our relationship with self. And it can only come through the function of reflecting and of, and of observing ourselves. So we're really called to look at all of the temporal values that have been conditioned upon us and how that is or isn't working for us on a natural level. And through that, we can gain deeper insights of the truth of our situation, the actual truth, not what we want to believe, not what we want to think, but the actual nature of what's occurring. And through that, we can do the analyzing. And through that, it creates discernment. And through that, we can do the Capricorn deal of making a correct judgment about our situation and then the need to commit, fully commit to what that is as a way to totally radicalize our relationship with self. This is what's being asked or reflected back to us right now. We are in a time period that is about metamorphosis that creates and perpetuates transformation. These are Scorpio and Aquarian words. Mercury in this conversation with Uranus is ruled by Saturn and Aquarius. And so this puts the Capricorn and Aquarius overlay together, which just even further symbolizes a need to go back and to reflect, reflect about where we have bought into illusions or given ultimate meaning to something outside of ourselves, how we haven't acknowledged or understood that what we seek is inside of ourselves the inner universe is inside the truth and the essence of who we are is not out there it is inside of here and this is pisces venus and needing to go back and to look at the trauma and the hurt that has occurred within our relationships prior and to not be afraid to look at this and where we felt hurt or victimized, but to understand that we have a responsibility to own our choices that led to that situation. And through doing that and this reflection, it creates deeper awareness for us. The polarity of Pisces is Virgo. And the beautiful thing about this is, is that when this awareness occurs, and we are able to make correct judgment through discernment and reflection, we get to exhaust these relationship dynamics and it gets purified. We don't ever have to experience these types of dynamics in this type of way ever again, not in this lifetime, not in the next one. But there has to be the courage and the willingness to go and to look into the depths of your soul and understand why you've made choices that you've made prior, where this stems from, how you've been conditioned to believe about yourself, value yourself, and how you've been conditioned to go about getting your needs. If you had parents who were manipulative or you come from a narcissistic family system, you're going to have conditioning revolving around these types of dynamics. And 
are being asked to look at your inner content and your motivations around getting your needs met. And through this penetration and getting to the bottom line of these dynamics, I know that was just one example. I know that's very generalized. Not everyone has that situation, but you guys get the essence of what I'm talking about. But through going back and being honest with oneself about these, you can take responsibility for your own choices and do Mercury and Cap, you know? And through that, Saturn and Aquarius, that's the ruler of that, you get to liberate from those structures. And then through that, it's ruled by Uranus and Taurus. You get to radically alter your inner relationship with self. So this is a very powerful time to consciously work with this energy and to seek the answers from within. And through that, there is a dissolving of these dynamics that perpetuate crisis and disillusionment and delusions and deceptions. And this is about reflecting on where you didn't honor the truth of what was occurring in the past and where that stems from and how you can make different choices now. The beauty in this whole conversation is, is that the illusion that a lot of people are going to find out is that they didn't have a choice when in actuality they did. And so understanding where self-defeating thoughts, Capricorn, have perpetuated these cycles of crisis or disillusionment within relationships. And now the power in having the courage, Mercury is ruled by Mars and Gemini. Um, I mean, Mercury is the ruler of Mars and Gemini. You get to create a situation of new choices and you have the power to make a different choice, to act differently. But it takes a willingness and a conscious effort to go back and to look at and to be honest and to see the truth, Pisces, of what has been occurring or what has occurred and to let that dissolve. And know that who you were last year is not who you are now. And whenever you make one of the biggest misconceptions that there is, is that when you create change in your life or you're evolving and you're growing, that you're being hypocritical because you're now making choices that you wouldn't have in the past or that maybe you judge someone else for. This conversation these conversations this week really speak to these types of dynamics as well, is to look at where we have judged ourselves or where we have judged others and how that perpetuated these cycles of, you know, illusion and crisis. And that you don't have to feel like a hypocrite for making a different choice now. That means that you're evolving and you're growing and you're doing what your soul is whispering to you from its depths, which is to evolve. So this is an important week and I wanted to go over these dynamics. There is a lot of information and awareness that can come about from just having the courage to take a deep look into oneself objectively. This can be for some writing things down on a piece of paper or journaling that creates objectivity um, through the reflection of something and then seeing it on paper. For some, this can come in the form of friends. There's Aquarian energy, being able to express these things to your friends, and it creates the objective awareness that you're needing through the reflecting of these dynamics, which ultimately perpetuates liberation and a radical state, a uh, different state of how we relate to ourselves and how we can be self-sufficient. This can also be going to a therapist. There's all of different ways to create objective awareness um, through the reflection of these dynamics. Pluto is still in Capricorn. Chiron is in Aries. These are cardinal, you know, energies that speak to, same with Jupiter and Aries, that speak to, you know, wanting to initiate a new cycle. These semi-squares are reflecting that as well, that Venus is having as she goes into Pisces. But you can create an imbalance when you're trying to jump to something and not doing the inner work and being able to integrate what it is you've been reflecting and becoming aware of. And so you have to do this interpersonal work and to ask and answer 
these questions for yourself about what is right and what is wrong. And through this reflection and awareness of object that comes through objectivity, transformation that you're seeking can, can come through. It can occur. The radical alteration of how we inwardly relate to ourselves. And then through that, how we relate to others can happen. This is a momentous time to break free old structures that are not in alignment with your own soul's growth at this time. So I just wanted to share these reflections to everyone that I'm having as I look at these cycles that are going on astrologically in these conversations. To me, this speaks of a beautiful time for evolutionary growth to exist and to occur. There can be an equally big opportunity with trines and Pluto Scorpio dynamics to want to resist this. There is a reason why it takes so long for people to evolve and to grow. It's because this is hard. It is hard to look at oneself honestly and to create objective awareness through reflecting and owning your own choices for taking responsibility for oneself. I know I've done it. I will continue to be in a cycle of this. It's super indicative in my own chart. But what I can tell you from experiencing these types of dynamics and consciously working with them is I have radically changed my relationship to self. And because of that, it's created a very positive effect on how I mother and how I am in partnership and how I do friendships. And so the change that you are wishing for can only be held within you. This week is really interesting because through discernment, it can create alchemy, which is a Scorpio type of phenomenon. And discernment comes from Pisces, Virgo. And through this discernment, and the creation of alchemy, what we once, what we're thinking was our poison can now be our potion. We can use it in a Chiron way to help share in healing others and within community, with our friends, with the collective. And the collective really needs that right now. So Thanks for your time. And I loved reflecting on this. And I will see everyone next week when I do this all over again. Have a good week.